Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, I was thinking hard of what to, uh, what, what will it to talk about? And <clears throat> I kind of thought about blank. I normally get blanks in the head anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, what will I do and what will I say? And, and, and you know, there's so many topics that, and things that you can talk about in the good book, from the good book that there. Uh, and uh, Dan, come on, you've got a few minutes only <clears throat> to help you with some by tomorrow. And, uh, yeah. I said the same to that. I said, oh, what's we talk? I said, I'm here to watch, you know, so I was a bit, and he's, he's, he spotted something on the table, but it didn't be done. But I had money on the table, 50 and so 60 or 70 euros on the table. And he picked it up and said, we're going to talk about well. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't make me wealthy, but it was the, it was the, it was the key word to you, as anyway. <laughs> and uh, so I said, all oh, right, well, you know, what like, how can I? So when he went and looked at the bit, the boy was Sunday night, and had a long day, etc. And other talks were passed around me, and I said, I'll look at it tomorrow. So I still wasn't right. So it took me a good while to get my head around what will I talk, what will I put the talk to, and what I will be in it for when I speak to people. So I said to myself, look, I want to talk about wealth. I said, I asked a question to myself. I said, who is, who would be the, the wealthiest man in the Bible. And as we all know, it's Solomon, you know. So I said, okay, so I said, where, where did I learn about this guy? I knew Solomon was Solomon and the Ecclesiastics and the Proverbs and the, and his own, the songs of Solomon. And he was, you know, I knew so much about him. But in, in Christ of God to help me to get more insight and he gave me more Interest, I say the least, to find out about this guy, Solomon, King Solomon, who was, I, I knew he was King David's son, but that's as much my, my knowledge is limited. So I looked up kings, and um, to be honest, it's the first time I really looked through kings from start to wherever chapter it was, and I was beginning to get my head around what was being said and what was done and stuff like that, and yeah. So, yeah, and um, so I, 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 I started to say from um, Solomon Kings in, in chapter 6, if you can start from there. That's my explanation done now. The rest is up to your good self <laughs> to take on board what I'm trying to say. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's more informative, I think, for me. So, when it's good enough, what I know, what I've learned. And um, I'm learning every day, of course. Thank God that I have the interest of you. And I have the, uh, the ability to do it, and um, the Lord has blessed me with good health. So, uh, so yeah, praise the Lord anyway. So, chapter six, and I'll go to the first one, I'll give you some idea. Uh, and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt. In the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month. Sith, well, Sith, I don't know what month that would be, which is the second month. Is that with every February? Um, and he began to build a house of the Lord. And uh, I moved up to verse 11. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, you know, uh, verse 12, concerning this house, he to build the first, the first temple of Jerusalem. Uh, and the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concern the self which thou art in building, if you will walk in my statutes, and execute my judgments, and keep all my commandments, to walk in them. Then will I perform my word with thee, which I spoke on today with thy father. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people of Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. Now, I won't come into the I was reading uh, how he built in the, the cubits and all that. Goodness me, he's going to be a, a, a professor at, at um, carpentry to understand. So I, I, I should not tell him with that one. <laughs> and I moved up to uh, Kings, David Kings now, onto um, chapter 9. 
And this is a great insight to what Solomon did and what, what he didn't do and stuff like that. So, okay. So, chapter 9. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all times to Sire, which he was pleased to do. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, and as he appeared unto him at Gibeon. So, why did I sit and say, well, well, this is something else. To be self I was saying this, um, I mean, anybody would say, the Lord to appear twice is something or something else, and it's nothing you see so very often. And I said, he, this, this is some why this Solomon to be bestowed with the, God, the Lord appearing to him twice. So I'm get, getting on with that, and I was just, uh, I said to myself, uh, yeah, we can move on to 10, and we go to verse 1, chapter 10. And when the Queen of Sheba heard of all the famous of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prison with hard questions. Um, when I seen the Queen of Sheba, it brought my memory back to when we were kids, or when I was grown up, people would say, yeah, uh, who does she think she is, the Queen of Sheba? Mm -hmm. And that was a well-known saying, but I didn't think in who is the Queen of Sheba. I know, I knew about it in the Bible, but I was the first one I really read about her. And moving on to this uh, first two, and she came to do for a very great train with camels that bear spices, very much gold and precious stones. And uh, when she came to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, there was not anything hid from the king which he had told her not. So, like he was very fond of Queen of Sheba, as said, seemed to hear her off there. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and, she, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his minister, their apparel and his cupbearers and his SM by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit for it. And she said to the king, It was a true heart of her, the man, own man, of thy acts and of thy wisdom. So, um, do I go on there? Yeah. So we just move from there down to, to, uh, oh yeah, I have 16 in there. Fair, go to fair 16. Yeah, I'll... question coming up for you lot. And the king Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of gold. Uh, I made with two hundred targets. That's the question. Hmm. I'm down there. Verse fourteen. Yes, first 14, sorry. This is where the question is. <laughs> now the weight of gold that, that came to Solomon in one year was 600, three score and six tons of gold. That's in first 14. And I said to myself, I love figures myself really to make them out. So can anyone really tell me what the total is there in figures? And I've seen that, it was 666. And that used to be the figure of... Uh, what is this do you have to call it? A beast, is it? So I said, it happily came from this. But at the same time, it was a wonderful uh, figure to come up with. And three score and, and uh, six. But uh, that was nothing that got me thinking as well. So I thought that was interesting to say the least. Um, go on, go on to change again, 1136. But King, first one, chapter 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabite, Ammonite, Edomites, and all the rest of them. Uh, of the nations concerned, which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go to them, neither shall they come in with you, for surely they will turn away your heart. After that, God, Solomon clay wanted those in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wife turned away his heart. 
2000 guy with 8 900 ladies, wives, in the copper boys. So I'm not saying that's the right, but uh, I just myself, I think I was reading this yesterday, fan times there, and he must have a great memory. How would you send all them cards? <laughs> <laughs> and he'd use a half his money to book fan time cards for 800 boys. <laughs> but uh, he was a marvellous fan, wasn't he, really? But uh, some would say one word is enough. <laughs> But uh, I found him a, a, a amusing type of character. But unfortunately, um, yeah, uh, level three, six, and I'll read that, yeah. Oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean six. Verse six. And Psalms did even in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Mm. So he. He committed uh, abominations. Uh, when he was getting older, he put tax on the local people. He was getting very unpopular. Um, he again go through it. His downfall was all, uh, if his wives went off and, 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 and exactly what the Lord said to him, what should you do and be careful that they might swear a heart and it did happen. And uh, he went off his wives and adored different gods and statues and all the rest of the things that he should not be doing. So Tom didn't end up too good at all. He was the richest and wealthiest man in the time. The house he built the rod was full of gold. They say that he, even to this day, if they, if they calculate the money he had with him, the wealth he had at the time, there was no one ever richer than him. Um, and there he goes, the Lord appeared to him twice. He had everything in the world that he needed and wanted. He had intelligence, super brain, he was famous for the the the, the, uh, the point of the baby, the two mothers claiming the same baby. And uh, when he said, "Okay, cut the baby in half and share it between us," <laughs> the mother owned it. So I said, "No, no, 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 let the baby live." And that was a brilliant piece of um, psychology and uh, and wisdom there, Sean. Just a small insight to what he did do, and part of the things he said, and building the temple, etc. So many good things that he blew it. Uh, his wealth I and mean, his, 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 you know, his wisdom was of no use to him. It didn't get him to, it, 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 it didn't, it didn't enter or say what happened to him, but he ended up with his downfall with what he did. Mm. Uh, his wealth didn't help him there. He didn't, he has a said, he was so he failed badly there. But before I'm running out of time now, but there. Uh, and we, we go to uh, Matthew, get some insight here, Matthew. I won't be calling any further than Matthew, I don't think. I've lots, I've lots of different, um, uh, you know, uh, scriptures, couldn't find that word. <laughs> uh, I think I had a bit of Solomon's brain there. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for God, so that was literally just the word. But I, I lost them written down and I changed my mind and went back and it was good. So, so look, I said, the option to way to heaven is what you must do and what you, what you should be doing. And what we're doing uh, so far, so good. Um, but uh, Matthew 6, okay, sorry, Matthew 6, chapter 6. And verse 25, yeah? Therefore I say unto you, this is Jesus talking here, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life on what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, and yet for your body, what you shall put in on, what you shall put on. It's not the, the life more than meat and the body that, than raiment. Uh, verse, 20, verse 29, yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
and that song will get mentioned uh, by Jesus and like he fell and had his time and had his payday, he's no comparison here. And go to uh, 22, 23. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know that you have need of all these things. But seek ye forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, I took from that there, these are the things you probably should be doing, whether you have money or whether you have nothing, or you have no clothes and you have big bills to pay, but seek God first. He's there, and he, he, your needs are there to be answered. By doing the right thing, being happy with, with righteousness and being with God and having the Lord on your side at each time. Um, Matthew 16, chapter 16. Okay, and verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what should a man give exchange for his soul? Um, and there's a question mark there. Um, I remember asking one of the British men in Kerry a question, and I, I could talk to him. Um, sometimes I would get away with saying to him, who was wasn't? I asked him, what was he going to do with millions? And he flopped his frogs. <clears throat> and he said, I'll give it to the church. And I said, I won't go into heaven. It's up to that effect, I won't get into heaven. And he looked at me as if to say, You know, did not think so. Or I couldn't read his eyes. He, he actually thought that this, we're leaving all his money to the church, that was his way into heaven. And this, this guy now has intelligence on me. I left here when I told him, I know that's not the truth, and that's not the way either. I know how the intelligent, but these guys with money think they're so clever. You we, we know millionaires in, in the assembly for them, I know, um, you hardly ever see them at all, folks the church. Um, I look at them even all around here, none of us are wealthy, <laughs> but we're healthy. Yeah. And the Lord has us in his protection, and we're doing the right thing. But uh, yeah, moving on from the healthy uh, and the wealthy, and um, that's a couple of things that I try to get through to life is money will never get you to God. Um, and do the right thing. Hence the scriptures that I've been reading now. Um, just move on to 19 and finish up on that. Also from chapter 19. Okay. Yeah. And it came to pass that when Jesus finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came out to the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. Um, yeah, I have chapter 19 first, but I haven't looked at it. Oh, I think it's week 24. I should have put down 24, but I didn't. And, and again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Mm. And that, that's one of the most commonest ones we all know about. It's an impossible thing to happen. The camel does all different versions. But in your mind's eye, it, when you think, how can a camel go through the needle, the eye of a needle? It's impossible. It can't happen. And the way to heaven is through God. Doing the right thing, being righteous with him, doing asking what we're doing here this night. That's part, that's some of the way, and staying that way. And uh, it, it'd be very difficult for the rich to do it because of their money, their wealth, their organs, and all those attached to it. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but it doesn't help. And um, the proof here in the good book, no matter how wealthy you are, how rich you are, you can't pay away to heaven. But we're doing the right thing through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.